if you told little me that me and as adult would be like interested in roller coasters, would be like traveling to different places across the United States to ride them, he would not have believed you. Maybe he would have, but most likely not. The thing about like digital media stuff, I feel like graphic design, video production, and uh, photography are very like uh, linked with each other. And having an enthusiast in that position as well is going to be fantastic. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Coaster Life Podcast. We are back from a bit of a hiatus, which I'll talk a bit about towards the end of the episode. But as always with the Coaster Life Podcast, I want to put my guests first and make them the priority. And today we are with a very special guest, someone I've actually known for a few years now at this point, and that is... Alex from Alex Studios. Hello. How are you doing today, Sean? I'm doing great. I'm actually not used to filming this during the day, which is kind of weird. That's how we're doing it now. But I don't mind. I'm, maybe it's making me a bit more active today and really peppy to film this new episode of the Coaster Life podcast. But it's great to see you. I know we met recently at Dorney Park. Yes. Last and I'm sure during the summer season, we'll run into each other. For we'll sure. Once again. But yeah, it's great to have you on this episode of the podcast. It's something I've wanted to do for a while now, kind of like going through the people that I know and then also sprinkling in people that I'm not too familiar with. But school is the exact same getting to learn about all your coaster lives. Just like everyone else, you have your very own coaster life that I feel like would be great for this podcast. And thus, you're on the podcast finally. Thank you. <laughs> so for those who are unfamiliar with you, if you want to give a brief introduction to yourself, uh, the type of content that you do or the things that you do in your normal life, go ahead. So I am Alex. I run a YouTube account called Alex Studios, and I also have an Instagram account. My YouTube account mainly focuses on documentaries and that kind of stuff. I've done specifically on stuff for Great Adventure. Um, it was mainly stuff from high school that I'll delve into later on. Um, but eventually, I do want to get more and do more videos in the future. Um, I will be sort of doing some of that stuff, but not from my account. Um, but I'll explain that later. And I also have an Instagram account that's amusement park related, travel related, and also just like personal stuff as well. Mainly, I do like graphic design stuff, uh, photography, and I also have been delving myself into video production a lot more. Fantastic. And you can easily tell his accounts because he has Sora and his logo as of now. Yes. <laughs> so, so I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan. Yes. I've, never, I've actually never played a Kingdom Hearts game. Which well, they are, coming like... to, they are coming to Steam very soon. Ooh. So... I'd recommend checking them out, or at least like the first game, because I may have to consider really that. I see like all the video memes and everything from Kingdom Hearts. Uh, I don't know; it's a it's a game I've been meaning to get into, but I think has it always been on like PlayStation? It's always been on PlayStation. Uh, that was the console it first released on, and then recently it's been getting to Xbox, Switch, partly because it's like cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it was on Epic Games, and now it's on Steam, so it's a lot more um, accessible now. And especially, like, with the series going forward, like, with um, the next big game, Kingdom Hearts 4, I imagine that, like, it's going to be on, like, every console. Yeah, definitely want to get into that maybe one of these days, although my gaming activities have definitely gone down these past few years. No, Trying to get back into it a bit more, but who knows? Uh, the only... <laughs> This is a throwback, if anyone remembers this. Uh, do you remember... Oh, God. what is it called Kingdom Keepers, that book? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do remember I got, like, the first book of that. Now, I'm going to hit you with something. Do you remember that one thing they had at the Magic Kingdom where it was, like, the whole card thing? And you had yes. to, like, go around... I forgot what that was. Like, I think it was, like, I think it was, Sorcerers uh, of the Magic Kingdom. Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom. Yes. I never did it, although I always wanted to. It was a cool thing. It took like a lot of time out of the day just like to do like one of the things for it. But it was like a cool offering they had and it was just like a nice extra thing 
um especially like if you're like an average like goer to the park you have to like look at the whole park differently with them and that's cool yeah the only kind of thing i did like that was when i used to go to great wolf lodge as a kid they had magi quests Ooh. throughout the uh halls and that was kind of like same idea you go to like different locations you do uh all sorts of things quests uh you name nice. it <laughs> and then epcot had its thing although i never did it as like agent p i did the i did the agent p one i think i remember doing the one in the norway pavilion god that was like 10 was over 10 years ago. ago man i'm sorry to any like new disney fans that are in here that i have no idea what we're talking about <laughs> but definitely look it up uh they're very interesting well, we, I feel like we just went on a big Disney tangent right yeah. there. <laughs> but <laughs> I guess going back into things, first thing I want to start off with is kind of looking more towards the beginning. Okay. So you consider yourself a coaster enthusiast, obviously, yeah. since I've known you. So I guess what I want to ask is, and I'm not really sure how often I've asked you this question, but how did you get into roller coasters and things of that nature so i guess to actually bring it back to disney um i found like before roller coasters i found my interest in theme parks and that was mainly from going to like yearly trips to disney when i was a little kid with my family and also going to a regional park very close to home it's a little park called you might have heard of it uh, six flags great adventure six flags great adventure i think i've heard of that place Maybe, maybe. But um, I've lived very close to Great Adventure my entire life, even with like moving to different houses across New Jersey. In fact, I'm even closer now than I am before. Um, but it's been those visits uh, when I was like a little kid and like seeing all of like these things around you. Um, I was always interested in it. I actually, um, my mom has like this one photo of me as like a little kid, like looking at the map of like Great Adventure like 2007 you can tell it was like the, i don't know maybe it was like 2007 2006 because like the chiller was still there uh, but it was it's a really nice photo because it just kind of shows like where like it started and like how it just became to be now um but um when i was a kid i used to be absolutely scared of roller coasters if you told little me that me and as an adult would be like interested in roller coasters would be like traveling to different places across the united states to ride them he would not have believed you maybe he would have but most likely not um but i think a lot of that has to do is that like at great adventure because like that was my first exposure to like big roller coasters you see like all these big things around you like nitro king da ka el toro and like I was scared of like doing like the the wildy e. coyote coaster in what used to be a Looney Tunes seaport, and it's just like when you see like all these other things around it, it's like it's so intimidating, and it's kind of funny because it's like you know younger me didn't realize that like I was surrounded by like some of the most acclaimed rides out there, like El Toro and King da Ka. It's kind of it's kind of crazy, like in that hindsight. I imagine it's kind of similar to someone grown, growing up at like Cedar Point. Like it's a whole island of roller coasters uh, and it's like <laughs> some of the most acclaimed as well. No, nah, definitely. I mean, I remember even even growing up on Long Island having like King Da Ka be within a reasonable driving distance from my house. The tallest coaster in the world being maybe like two two and a half hours away exactly. i thought was like insane like how is this ginormous thing so close i mean it's in a different it's state insane. for me it's in basically in your backyard exactly exactly <laughs> which is even crazier it's always funny because like when i'm driving around the area like when i'm with if ever i'm going to like allentown in jersey or anything like that just like I'm, I can always like see King Nika in the distance. It's just this giant spire in the sky. And it's like, and just like how like, like the green kind of goes a little bit with like the whole, all the trees around it. It's kind of cool. But it took a while to get like, to overcome my fear of roller coasters. Um, you know, I started like doing stuff like um, Skull Mountain, uh, The Dark Knight, Rolling Thunder. And then eventually I made up to doing Batman, the ride. 
And that was my first ever uh, looping coaster. And I was mm. really scared of doing it for the first time. Um, and But I remember there's actually somebody in line with us, like giving me motivation. And my dad was also there as well. And getting off the ride, I really enjoyed it. It was a really good ride. This might be going back a while now, but do you remember why you chose Batman the ride as your first? I think Batman because out of all of them, it looked the most... Um, the most present, not presentable, but like the most like easy going cool looking. Yeah. Cool looking, easy going. And I think also it like looked the smallest out of all of them. But I like, I think like looking now it's like, I realized maybe I should have started with Superman because that's a lot more, there are some t intense things about it, but it's like a lot more of, it's much more easy going. Cause it's just that feeling of like flying while like Batman is like, it's intense. No, I think the thing, especially for new coaster enthusiasts or general public, I think the thing that freaks people out about Superman is the flying position and I think the pretzel loop. Oh, yeah. It's like position right at the front of the park. You're like, oh, how does that feel? I know that was something I was even like thinking about before I rode. But that's really cool. I would have thought you chose Batman the Ride because of the character of Batman. Oh, I think maybe that also had to do that as well. Um, but I think it was just the mix of it being Batman and also it just being like the smallest and like least intimidating, at least in my eyes at the time. No, that's uh, fair. But then it, it took time to like do some of the other ones. I remember one day we went to the park with my mom's close friend and her daughter. We did Superman, Green Lantern and Bizarro all in one day for the first time. And that felt just like a really like rewarding moment um but it took it took some time to do some of the other ones like probably the one i was most scared of for a long time was uh nitro i think a lot of that has to do with how big it is like i've never been on something anything that big before and i remember a lot of times like my when i was with my family my dad or my sister would tell me to go on it and they would like try to bribe me with money to go <laughs> on it or like oh i'll get you this thing if you go on it. and i was like no i don't want to do it my dad did similar things for me as a kid at Bush <laughs> Gardens. You got to get them on somehow. The way my dad described it to me, because my first uh, upside down ride was Loch Ness Monster. Oh, okay. Which is interesting. The way he described it to me was just like, oh, a loop is just like you just continuously keep going up and that's it. If you're a little scared of going upside down, use that going into rides like Loch Ness Monster. Or yeah. Little Loop. You just keep going up and then you just... eventually you do a flip. Exactly. Also, the forces keep you in the seat. So great adventure, though, as your home park being really close. Once again, is really interesting to me. And also just kind of being local, I would say, to the area of Jackson. I guess the question I want to ask now is just being so local to that area you see all this change that's happening around oh, Great yeah. Adventure. So how would you say the area around Great Adventure looks now compared to like when you went as a kid? It's so much different. I think the biggest thing is the whole adventure crossing facility they have. Going to the park um, like in like the early 2010s, none of that was there. It was just forest and you didn't really get to see anything of King Naka until you were like right about at the entrance like there used to be like a little um paint paint gun area um mm -hmm. right before it um and that's like the only place you could see ka but um it's it's crazy seeing how much like it it's has changed um i think some of it makes sense i think like when you have such a big park such as six flags and the amount of new stuff they have like they have like the glamping there this year, the water park and also the dry park. I think it makes sense to have like stuff around it to go along with it. Like I know that they have like the little um, top golf thing. So I think that works because say in the instance of rain or anything like that, there's something to do outside, right outside of the park if it like rains halfway through the day. I think it's really great now, especially for people that are coming far distance and you do get hit with that rainstorm and granted great adventure rarely closes for rain. I feel yeah. like, but if it does, there is that stuff nearby that you could 
still have fun and socialize. Exactly. It's sort of like what you were talking about earlier, this sort of island. It's not an actual island, of course, but right. like in the middle of the Pine Barrens and everything, where the listen, the closest like hotel or anything like that is a considerable distance away. Yeah, it is. And it seems like they are gonna add like a hotel to the adventure crossing like facility. So that's like good for like guests that are like coming from like out of state specifically for Great Adventure and like other offerings. When did you start potentially looking at other amusement parks to visit or I guess was it your family that instigated that or was it you? It was a mix of both. And I'm actually glad that you mentioned that because that's something I wanted to talk about before, like we started to like really travel, um, like road trip wise, we went to places like Dorney park and Hershey park places that were relatively nearby. And then also of course, um, places over by the beach, like Jenkinson's and uh, casino pier. But I'd say like when I really started to like get into traveling and like road trips was, uh, 2017. Um, that was the year my dad and I did like our first, I guess you could say a road trip, really. Um, we went to Kings Dominion for the first time. We went to Washington, D.C., and then we went to Six Flags America. And then it's kind of been like we've been trying to do like a yearly tradition now to go to like different parks or usually we want to try to do road trips. But um, we also just like to travel as well. Um, the year following, we went to Six Flags New England, Rhode Island, and then upstate New York to visit family. 2019, we did. We went to Universal, but I've been there before, and then also Magic Kingdom for a day. 2020, we didn't really do much because of the pandemic. Not many people did. Yeah. <laughs> and then 2021, that's when like the the road trip started to get very uh, sophisticated. We did. Dollywood, Six Flags over Georgia, Carowinds, and we also, of course, like visited other things around it, like uh, Pigeon Forge, um, Atlanta, Georgia, and there wasn't really that much to see um, given the time we had in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, but we were still able to do a lot. And then the year following, we did um, Kings Island, Cedar Point, and Kennywood, and then the year following, we did uh, Disneyland, Knott's, and Universal Studios Hollywood. And we also did a little bit of a retread from uh, 2021 because we did uh, CoasterCon last year. Um, so we did um, Dollywood and um, Carowinds. Interesting. I'll say right now, do you have a favorite road trip that you've done all those years? <sighs> I think... I think it's a really big mix between 2021 and 2022. I might lean a little more towards 2022, mainly because that was my graduation uh, celebration from high school and also like the 50th anniversary at Kings Island was going on. And I think like in hindsight, that's probably my favorite regional park. There's just so much that I love about the park. Um, the rides are really good, and I really like how much they care about the history of the park as well. Yeah, a King's Island is a place I want to visit. Badly. It's so good. And it also see so the points good. as well. Yeah. I mean, if it's anything like King's Dominion, and I love King's Dominion, and everyone I know says King's Island's way better. So it's been It's been a few years since I've been to, I think actually like the last time I went to King's Dominion, not like during like a holiday event because I've been during like Winterfest, like it's holiday um, overlay, was 2017 actually. So oh, I've wow. never done, I've never done Intimate, or what is it called now? Project 305. Project 305. Never done Anaconda. I did, um, what is it? Twisted Timbers? Twisted Timbers. Twisted, I did that because it was open during Winterfest. Thankfully, I did get to do Volcano at the time when I was in for 2017. Uh, that ride really took me by surprise, especially from uh, the launch. What I was thinking, it would be something like uh, King Naka, where like you stop and then it launches you. 
but like right when you get out of the station you take that turn and then you're just off and it took me so much by surprise and it did freak me out but i am very happy that i got that credit considering that the ride's not open anymore i am too and i also funny enough i wrote it in 2017 (laughs) (laughs) uh I remember what I remember about Volcano is one, it feels just like an impulse coaster. If you've ridden Possessed, it felt exactly the same. Um, but it was a cool ride shooting out of that volcano and everything. I do miss it, but I am glad I wrote it. You definitely like mixing it up. Yes. So would you say you're at a stage now where you still like to keep mixing up the road trips, or are you at a point where you're okay with kind of doing a similar road trip going back to different destinations that you've been before. I would love to do like going back to places eventually, but a big thing is my dad likes to travel to a lot of different places. My dad and my sister took a trip to Universal um, earlier this year. And my dad really liked it because, but he's been to the place before and he wants to do like something different. And we might be doing a trip to Texas this year. We got some tickets for uh, Fiesta Texas from uh, an event for Ace earlier. It was East Coaster. We funny sure enough. did. Um, and we're also looking maybe to do like Over Texas and the SeaWorld Park that's there too. That's another area that just looks so great when it comes to parks. And there's a lot of stuff around there as well. Do you always do these road trips, you and your dad? Yeah, that's mainly been um, that's mainly been like the go-to. Sometimes we have, like, sometimes for, um, like, stuff like Disney, like, California, I've had our sister come along. Um, but it's mainly just been my dad and I, because I feel like the thing is both of us can, like, handle uh, doing, like, things on a daily basis. Like, sometimes it can be kind of hard for, like, my mom and, like, sister to just, like, go to parks every single day, which is completely understandable. But what's nice is that my dad and I have like that durability that we can just like do these parks every day, especially during like um, Coaster Con last year. That was a big thing of just, like getting to the parks early, like for a lot of the events and also just like being there till park closure. It's like it was a very I think it was like a big feat, um, just like something big to like do. But um you know, it was still a great time because I got to be with a lot of people. One of them, funny enough, was uh, Michael from Blue Diamond Coasters. Yeah, both of you were at that coaster con, and I think so was uh, yeah, Matt, Matt was there, who was also on the also podcast. From uh, Brian, he's a good friend of Matt. Yes, I'll say from an outsider, coaster con looks like a freaking endurance test. It uh, it is. It <laughs> really is. Um, I don't know when I would do one ag- again. I think what's nice about just like ace events for like a single day, such as something like Thrillathon, it's just one day um, and you just kind of have like an idea of like what to expect going into it. But it's like CoasterCon, it's like there's a schedule, but it's just so much. No, that's why I like most of the ace events are on weekends too, uh, because it works around most work schedules. Most people have that Monday to Friday type job and then you don't have to worry about taking off the weekends to go to an ace event other than the ones that are like coaster con which are pretty rare but they are big events that you'd want to take off for exactly and this year i think they're doing it on the west coast i think they announced the east coast they're doing it around like uh the chicago area yeah the following year if it returns to the east coast i'll definitely consider it i know (laughs) <laughs> it's been a while since there's been one i think pennsylvania was like the last one that was 2021 i'm gonna say yeah it was like i think 2020 it got delayed to 2021 if i was in delaware and had my apartment at that point in time i would have gone wow. but i think they're probably gonna, yet. Mm-hmm. i think they're probably gonna do the the 50th uh coaster con again pro- probably at bush gardens williamsburg because that's where Ace was founded. I think that too. I think that makes sense. Bush it's, Gardens, Williamsburg, uh, maybe Kings Dominion, and maybe like a good one or something like that. Yeah. So now I want to transition a bit towards some of the stuff that you've actually made yourself. So 
first I want to start off with the YouTube side. So if you haven't seen on Alex's YouTube channel, he has two different documentaries present. So the first one was Jersey Devil, and the second one was about the Wild Safari. Correct. Yes. So I have a lot to uh, say about those. Sure, so, go ahead. Um, before I even thought of making those projects, because those were school projects originally, but then really? I... Yes, yes, they were. I didn't know that. <laughs> My high school was had like a very big like video production program, um, but I'll get into that. But for a very long time, I've always been interested in the history of parks and coasters. And I think I owe a lot of that to uh, Kevin Perger's series, uh, Defunct Land. It's such an interesting series that goes over the history of so many things. It's very informative, very educational, and also being very entertaining. And I think what's great about his series is that there's so much variety to it. Like he can talk about like um, the history of like Drac and Fire one episode, and then like another video you can find on this channel is about a Wiggles ride. Excuse me, a Wiggles ride, and I think that's really cool. No, I definitely agree. Uh, Kevin from Defunct Land, amazing channel. Go sub to him if you aren't already. Uh, his his releases are like events at this point. For my high school, uh, we had video production classes because I was part of like a video production like program, something sort of similar to that. But like I took classes for it, um, and we had a variety of different projects we did, like silent films, short films, music videos, and what interested me the most. Um, like halfway through my time at high school was news packages and documentaries. Now we just started like from the projects I did, it was mainly just doing stuff at school. Um, but I remember actually, uh, I was doing a news package about um, the place I used to work at. It was called Hot Shot Subs. It was the sub shop that was actually right outside of Great Adventure. It's unfortunately not there anymore, but it was a really nice establishment. Um, was that the place that used to be a Duncan? Yes. Yes, it did. Now I think it's like Tommy's Inn or something like that. But I did like a little news package about that place with some of the workers and the, the manager of the place. And it was a nice little project. Um, but I actually remember um, we decided to go over to um, Prosper Town Lake. We got like food at Hot Shot Subs and then we went there. Uh, because I wanted to actually see a little bit of some of the construction stuff for Jersey Devil, funny enough. Um, and then, like, I had, like, my camera stuff with me, and I was looking out to, like, I was looking over by Jersey Devil, and I was like, wait a minute. I might be able to do something with this. Because the thing is, the ride wasn't finished yet. There was still, like, construction going on. I think, like, I think the ride, like, all the track layout itself was already there. But uh, they were still doing, like, construction and obviously testing. Um, and then, like, the next project we were given, I think, after that, or maybe a little while later, was a documentary. And then I started to think, like, what if I did a documentary about the Jersey Devil Coaster? I think that because of it still being under construction, there's, like, something to... There's, like, a story to tell for a lot of different reasons, uh, like, at the time. I think a few of them um, was it being like a single rail coaster. Like that was kind of a new type of uh, attraction, you know? I think like the only one at the time was I think like Wonder Woman Golden Lasso at Fiesta, Texas. So like I think to like the general public, it's like, how does this work? How does this kind of like coaster work? And also about the uh, the lore about the Jersey Devil as well because of its like theme so related to something at in jersey i think there's something there's something to explain to like people that uh don't have that kind of context that don't know that story so i told my um my one of my uh video production teachers about this idea and they really liked it something else that also got me to think of doing this project is at the time um my high school had connections with some people at uh, Six Flags, mainly mainly in the marketing department. Um, it was with uh, Kristen Fitzgerald. She is no longer with the company, but she was someone that was working there at the time. 
Um, I think like they, from what I remember, they shot like a thriller video there. I think like during like Fright Fest or something mm -hmm. like that uh, for the, for my school, Jackson Liberty. So having that like context that knowing that it's like they've done projects before, it seemed like a lot more that this could actually be a thing that could happen. Um, and we discussed it, my teacher and I discussed it with Kristen, and she was very much uh, interested in doing this. So for a while then, I was just like planning stuff ahead for what I wanted to do for this project, like uh, questions, um, I guess like the main, narr how I wanted the narrative structured, like the intro, and then everything else in between, like the construction about the ride, about the mythos and all that stuff. Um, I actually remember, uh, I, ha I still have, um, like this little notepad I have, um, that was just information about like what I wanted to do for, um, the project. I don't have it on me, but, um, I was actually going through it, um, cause I found it a while ago. Uh, I don't know where it is now, <laughs> uh, but I found it and I actually remember I made like a little... Uh, sketch idea for what I wanted to do f to like introduce like the title of the video. Um, That's really cool. And like finding it now and then looking back on it was such like a cool thing because it's just like it's just it's it's a really nice thing to see like where this idea started just like from that sketch and then to see it where it is like in the actual video. It's really cool. Um, but then we went out to uh, Great Adventure one day. Um, while they were in, doing construction, we interviewed Chris, Kristen Fitzgerald, and then we also interviewed uh, two other people um, that were involved with the construction of the ride, and it was a really fun day. Um, I had um, one of my friends come out to help me out with uh, doing the project, and I also had my two um, video production teachers, and then I also had my dad there with me as well. That's really cool. I, I especially love how it turned from like a storyboard that you made and turned that into a reality. That's something that a lot of like mainline directors do on like movies. So seeing that even for something like a school project exactly. documentary thing uh, is really neat. I think it's just like one of the best feelings that like this idea that I had like one day, like this one idea that it's like oh like a what if idea and how just like it evolved into other people being interested in it other people wanting to help out and also just like people showing me support in that regard because this was a really big thing for me because i've never done anything on that scale before because the documentaries that my school did were kind of just like five minutes or small like simple things but that doesn't take away from it because it's like it's still very informative I think like the documentary ended up being like 12, like 13 minutes long. It was a really big, it was like probably the first big project that I ever did in terms of uh, video production stuff uh, and also editing as well. Actually, that is something I did want to talk about. So you, you are going heavily into the video production of this type of project. But have you had exposure to editing at this point? I did, yes. I've had experience with editing for my video production class uh, with Premiere. And I also did some stuff for my dad, um, but with using uh, Sony Vegas. Now, Sony Vegas was something that I had at my house. Um, it was the only um, editing software I had at the time. And nothing against anyone that uses Sony Vegas. Um, because I know a lot of people that can do really great things with the software, but it was just not a software I had experience with, with like in school, with learning about uh, Premiere at the same time with using something like Vegas, the, the knowledge clashes in between with each other. So it makes it like very diff, at least for me, it was very difficult trying to figure out like what to do for this and all that stuff and like figuring out like a timeline for it. And it's kind of hard to look a little back. It's kind of hard to look back on like the Jersey Devil project a little bit because it's like there are things that I wish I did better, in, like an editing sense or like in a production sense. Um, and I wish it didn't take that long either. I think like the editing process took like a month or two and I really wish it did not. But it it just it it happened. And 
Um, At least it didn't take five years. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, something, too, that I can relate to as a YouTuber posting here on East Coaster Fan is uh, eventually you just have to let the video go and release it. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck editing that literally for the rest of your exactly. life. Exactly. I think the the most important thing is like even though I was not the most happy with how the final result result turned out in like an editing sense I wish like some things I shortened down a little bit. What matters most is that I got that story out there. Not just about the ride, not just about like the mythos, but also about like the people that worked on it as well. One of the people that I interviewed for the ride, it was her first time doing a big like coaster project for her and this was like a dream of hers so it's just like it's important to get those stories out there because it's it's the people that make up these rides it's, it's how they happen so i think it's important to hear out those stories of those people um and also it's just like i have that just like from the mistakes that i made in this first video i can use as knowledge for the next one to keep in mind and that I can, um, I know what to do for next time. And that's exactly what happened uh, the year following because I did a documentary then about the safari. That's a fantastic segue into that. Uh, so how did you transition from talking about a roller coaster to then the wild safari, which is if you, you could think of it being a much more bigger scope a much bigger history involved oh, sure. um and like you mentioned before you could learn from any mistakes or challenges that you found along the way making yeah. the jersey devil video it's kind of funny that you say that because i thought of like doing the safari as a lot easier to do actually because the thing about jersey devil it was a very specific thing it's like this is a specific kind of ride that was very new at the time there's very specific like lore about like the jersey devil um and also just like about the construction it's just like very sophisticated not to take away from the safari but the thing about the safari it's a safari it's like this is something that's like that people generally know what that is it's just you had just have to explain the uh the drive-through aspect of it i wanted to do since uh, i did my jersey devil project during my junior year of high school um, when I was in my senior year of high school, I wanted to do one more like big documentary before um, I finished up my time at high school because I didn't know what I would be doing then if I had like um, the connections I had um, from my teachers because I didn't know how I would be able to like communicate and also just like say to like like a park or anything like that. Hey, I want to do a documentary. <laughs> it's kind of hard to just like at least at the time. It was kind of hard to imagine how do I just say that um, as just like some guy. I was actually thinking of doing maybe like some different things. I wasn't originally, Safari was like one idea I had of a few. Um, one I was thinking of doing was maybe about like the haunt for Dorney Park, um, but that never really happened. Maybe it might be something I might do in the future maybe. Put but, it on the shelf. Exactly. And then another one I had in mind was maybe something about the, not about like the park, well, something about the park, but more about like the whole town of Hershey, focusing on stuff mm -hmm. about like the park, but also just like about like the whole town and like how like the, the brand of Hershey and also just like the stuff related to Hershey has made like an impact around like different businesses and that kind of stuff. Um, but I decided to go with the safari. It was the most closest and also... I already did a project with Six Flags, so there's already that um, connection there. I think it was like April of 2022 when I was actively talking to one of my teachers about it. And then we were talking to Kristen Fitzgerald about it, and she was very open to the idea. And then I think like sometime around May, we shot the project, and it was a really fun day. I had um, a decent amount of my video production friends um, from high school helped me out with the project and it was just like a really fun day. There's a lot of really nice highlights to say. Uh, I think one of them was one of the, um, the, one of the interviews we shot, we actually shot it in the goat pen. 
like where all the goats were at the time. Uh, so we got some footage then of like just some of the goats um, around uh, in the pen. I think I I think I used one of them in the uh, the the video, at least from what I remember. Hopefully, because it was really funny. After we did all our video, uh, interviews, um, we got like a little demonstration of the two sea lines that they had, and it was just like a really just like a really cool opportunity because you know about like the the wild walkway. Yes. And like where those sea lines on, we were on the other side. So we, we were like very close to where the sea lions were. So it was just like a really, a really cool um, experience. And I was really happy to share it with like other people. I'm really happy that all my friends that went out with me that day were able to have this experience as well. It's just a really cool thing. That's very cool that you made it almost sort of a bonding experience with your high school friends as well. And it's something you didn't even have to do necessarily. It's just, from what I can understand, it's something you did almost just as a way to hang out with others and have fun. Exactly, yeah. Now, I'm not sure how much detail you can go okay. into this, uh, but you mentioned about the networking. So what was the process like? Obviously, you said the, I think the teacher knew... Uh, Kristen. The Kristen in, Mar in PR. After that, what was what was it like communicating back and forth with her on that end? Was it like mainly through email, call? It was like... mainly through email. That okay. was it. Um, I think like the biggest challenge was just making sure um, Kristen had to reach out, I think, to like one of the main like animal researchers they have at the, the park just to make sure that this would be allowed and all then that it would be like good to go. Um, but that was it. It was just mainly talking through email. I was also talking with uh, Gabriel Doretta because he was working at the park at the time. <laughs> um, Who's now at Sesame Place. Yes. So it wasn't the networking stuff wasn't too uh, difficult. That's actually stuff I've been doing recently now, um, but I'll, I'll get into that. So then after we got all that footage, we got all the interviews. Something actually funny to say about the footage, um, to get a lot of the footage for the safari, my dad and I had to go through, I think, like the safari five different times between like the course of like a month or two. And it was just, just like a really fun time because each time something different happened. And I think my favorite one was um, one time like a giraffe was right above our sunroof. Oh, wow. So that made for like a really fun shot. Was the safari open to the public? When this was happening or yeah, was that's it... when it still had drive through. Okay. That w there was that time in between. Yeah. They just closed it at 2023. It was that time between 2020 and then 2023 when they, th they brought back the drive through, but now it's the vehicles again, but it's cool now because they have it so that the vehicles are accessible outside of the park and inside of the park, which I really like. Yeah, I haven't done it outside the park since they changed it. I got lucky when I went in April. They had the in-park entrance open, but then they closed it again. It's an interesting change. I'm curious to see how it goes for the park, uh, especially more so with like the the outside entrance, seeing if that can uh, maintain. I think it's going to be like a different pathway, I'd say, because like the safari like inside the park has like a different course you would take than like say if you were like doing like the regular drive through experience. You don't get to see the baboon exhibit. Hopefully I get to do it one of these days, the the outs outside the park. Um hopefully they do have that section for it. And once again, and if you've never done the safari at Great Adventure, do it. It's really fun. It's really cool. Especially I think the the truck experience is really the way to go too with the off-road adventure. The car was fun. I did it, although it was a little rainy. It was a little yeah. hard to see. But other than the thrill of saying, oh, I get to drive my car past a giraffe or something, it's the rest of the experience is better. Yeah. The truck is a much that okay. like much more of a sophisticated experience. And also there's someone actively telling you information. And also, it's just like really cool being on this big truck and being right next to all these animals. It's it's a really nice experience. Um, 
But to get back into the project of the documentary for the safari, the editing process, I'm going to say, like, took like two or three weeks, something around that line, uh, because instead of using Vegas, I was using Premiere then. So it was a much easier process to edit the whole project because that's the software I have um, experience with. And I was also able to try new things with editing, like doing stuff with headers. Um, and let's see what else. And also just, I feel like doing better audio mixing and also just like trying like maybe, maybe like new transitions and that kind of stuff. Um, but I was like, looking back now, I'm very happy with how uh, the Safari documentary turned out. I feel like uh, it's, it's a really nice like continuation from like the stuff I learned from the Jersey Devil documentary. And also it's just like, it's informative. Um, and it was just exactly like, narrative wise exactly what i wanted it to be and once again uh if you're interested in seeing those documentaries feel free to go to alex's youtube channel that'll be linked in the description below for this video recording and it'll also be in the description of the audio recording as well so i think the last thing i want to mainly talk about is more so on the photograph side yes yes which is another big component to your content Yes. Especially on Instagram. Yes. Yes, yes. And recently, you actually started posting a lot more amusement park and roller coaster content. I'm sure you could go into more detail about that, but how has that been? Uh, it's been good. More of that? Um, so this past semester in college, um, I took a photography class and my main thing, like I had to focus on like one series and the thing I wanted to mainly focus on was tall things in New Jersey. So I did stuff like the Barnegat Lighthouse, different water towers, um, just different locations all around New Jersey. And one I did was Great Adventure because there's a lot of tall structures, the tall coasters and all that stuff. Um, so it got me a lot more interested in like getting precise moments for photography. Um, but something else is um, this past, this photography class I just took, I got a lot more experience with editing photos, like doing like um, editing, like the brightness and the contrast of like certain parts of a photo, such as in a Photoshop. So that got me like, I really enjoyed that process. And I was like, I kind of want to do something with this because the thing about like digital media stuff, I feel like graphic design, video production and uh, photography are very like uh, linked with each other. They're all part of like one big thing. Um, so I think I made an Instagram account called the, the Travel Seeker. And I want this to be like an account where I focus on doing like um, weekly, where I um, post weekly photos um, of different places that I've been to, like parks, roller coasters, and also just like general stuff. I think that would be like something I can put on my portfolio. And it's also just like having it be on like a weekly schedule will keep me like engaged with like um, actively doing stuff in photography because I've, I'm going to have some video production stuff I'll be doing in the future. I have a lot of graphic design stuff. Um, like these past couple of years, I've been very, I've been delving myself very deeply into stuff for graphic design from doing some commissions for friends and also just like doing a lot of courses for it since that's my major in college. Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, once again, feel free to follow that new Instagram as well with all those photos. And then it, within Great Adventure itself, do you have any like favorite photo spot that you love taking Ooh. pictures of? <laughs> that's a good question. I think it might be like the... The, the right side of the park, like where Batman, Jersey Devil, all the Justice League stuff is. I think maybe that's my favorite area to shoot stuff at. Um, I think maybe Batman the Rides is probably one of my favorite rides to do photos of because you have like the Batmobile right out there and you have just like all like the, the coaster right behind it. And also like Nitro, I think like one of my favorite things to do or when, um, when the big wheel was open i think it's is that being renamed to the giant wheel it might be 
Okay. I forget off the top of my head. If but, I um, names, but I remember I had to do a few shots there for one of my documentaries. And it's it's such a like a really nice photo centric thing to get King, uh, not King Da Ka, uh, to get uh, Jersey Devil, Nitro and Batman all together, just like and you have all like the trees around it. It's 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 just a really nice it's it's my favorite area of the park. Not only in a photograph sense, but also just like ride sense as well. <laughs> yeah, that area is just nice and shaded, lots of trees everywhere. And when you're up high on the wheel, getting that shot, getting all those coasters all oh, together. Yeah. And I'm sure Flash. Oh, might yeah. Be able to I was about to mention, I'm very excited to see like, how Flash is going to look like when you're up on the giant wheel. I'm curious how close the gondola is going to go to the, um, is it that dive loop? Yeah. Or is, it, or is it sort of like next to one another, like not direct? It's been a while since. It's, it's going to be really great adventure. close. That's, that's for sure. That's the main takeaway. It's going to be really close. I haven't been since they started vertical construction. I hope that's going to change soon because I'm eager to get back. But uh, yeah, I'm really interested to... Uh, see flash and eventually ride it this year it looks great mm -hmm. so to end things off i want to look forward with you so uh do you have anything other than like the texas trip which you mentioned um is there anything else that you have planned or anything noteworthy to mention in your life that has happened one big thing is I'm going to uh, Rutgers in the fall for the next two years. Congratulations. Thank you. So I'll be finishing up my college time. Maybe I might eventually go back for a master's, but just going for a bachelor's right now. And something recently that I'm very excited to say, I actually I actually recently got a job at a great adventure for uh, marketing. Woo! Uh, and it was a position for uh, an, an internship for uh, video editing and also... Um, digital asset maintenance that'll be like going through like different um, photos, videos, and that kind of stuff to see what's good to uh, present like on social media and like throughout the park and that kind of stuff. And I'm very excited because it's just going to be like a really nice opportunity um, as like a job, but also in an educational sense as well, because this will be an internship. There's going to be a lot I'm going to learn about like editing and all that stuff. And I'm very excited to learn about that. And having an enthusiast in that position as well is going to be fantastic. I'm really excited for you. I think that's going to be great. I hope you also learn a bunch, like you mentioned. Thank you. I hope so, well. too. Uh, maybe I'll try my best to sneak on to one of the <laughs> videos maybe one of these days. And what's so funny is uh, I have one final surprise. Uh, it's only going to be in the video format, so okay. it's not going to play here, but... I found digging back into my archive of video vlogs, I, I found the clip of our first time interacting during Summer Vibes Fest Ooh. in 2022, <laughs> where <laughs> I found you and your dad. Well, actually, a little bit the opposite. We kind of like DM'd each other at that point in time. Yes, yes, we did. But here, I'll play that clip now. <laughs> the goal right now is to uh, check back on Skull Mountain to see if it's back open. But I'm not alone. Here with me is Alex. Hello. And also- And his dad. dad. Yeah, that's right. With this guy right here. Yeah, so that was, uh, <laughs> that was really cool that day. And then we, we really like blossomed our friendship, I'd say. For sure. Because- 2022 now. And then right after Summer Vibes, we did Thrillathon, which is where I met Michael, Blue Diamond Coasters, Coaster Guy 95, and so many other people. And like now I've gotten to know a lot of uh, people within like the the coaster community. And I think something really, I guess, funny to say is I like in 2017, 2016, I watched a lot of people at the time, like Coaster Studios, Coaster Kids, a bunch of other like roller coaster accounts where they would be like with a big group of people. And at that time, I was like, man. I really wish I had something like that to go to these parks with all these other people that are really big fans of these parks. And it's like, I didn't even like realize until like recently, it's like, oh, I'm there now. I have like that opportunity. Like I know all these people now and it just, 
it's a it's a really great feeling it it's just great it is a really great feeling um and something too uh is like when i was younger it was always like oh i want to try and fit into that group of enthusiasts to like uh taylor bybee and all his friends but i think what you realize what i realized when i was growing up and these like these past few years is that you just find your own people exactly and sometimes they are those people that <laughs> have been making content for a while but sometimes it's meeting brand new people and it's even better exactly so i think that's a perfect place to leave off our discussion with you so uh thank you so much alex for You're coming welcome. on this episode of the coaster life podcast thank you so once again uh follow alex on youtube and instagram at alex studios as well as his brand new instagram travel seeker 140 i got the numbers right right I think, yeah, you did. Travel you did. Seeker 140? Okay, yes. good. <laughs> want to make sure I get that right. Um, if there's anything else you want to plug, uh, feel free to do so. Not really a plug, but I just want to say thanks to uh, my friends and my family that have always, like, encouraged me and always have, like, believed me for, like, creating stuff and, like, doing these projects. And I guess something, one last thing I want to say is we're all capable of so many uh, great things um like like in 2020 or like start of 2021 i never imagined like at the end of it i could have like a like a documentary to call my own that involved like filming uh script writing um planning and then editing and i think it's just like everybody is capable of creating and doing so much we just need to have the, the courage to try and to learn. And then uh, one final note regarding the Coastal Life show itself. I know I mentioned it briefly at the beginning, but the, as you could tell by the way this is edited, uh, decided during the hiatus of the Coastal Life between the last episode and now, uh, took a deep dive into how the show is being made and how it looks and how it appears on everything. So... There are a few changes that you could see in this episode, a few changes yes. I've made on my end that uh, make it easier for me editing. And the goal is for this show to just be uh, a lot more, I guess, simple. And to the point where the main goal is sharing the lives of coaster enthusiasts. That is the point of the Coaster Life podcast. And I want to make sure that stays the point of this podcast. So I may change a few things along the way, but if you want to uh, consider maybe the first few episodes of the show as like a trial period, uh, you can. And I'll always change things up here and there just because that's how I am with YouTube and everything. Change is necessary no matter what. So bear with me as I'm sure it won't be the end of changes to the show, but in the end, I hope to make the Coaster Life podcast the best it could possibly be. For sure. So with that being said, if you'd like to see the video version of this podcast where you can see us doing all sorts of things on screen, man, you'd be missing a lot if you didn't see the screen right now. Uh, <laughs> feel free to watch the video version on the East Coaster Fan YouTube channel. And then vice versa, if you're on the go and can't be looking at a screen, maybe you're driving the car, you can listen to the audio version of this podcast that is on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So with that being said, thank you all, and go out there and live your very own Mr. Life. Bye, guys.